Spherical geometry, a new simpler approach. These talks will demonstrate a less complicated application of spherical geometry that will allow the user to self-discover many of its amazing properties and perform a more in-depth analysis of the platonic solids. None of this requires using physical trigonometry or other complex analysis methods, and users are encouraged to discover these properties with their own hands using simple spherical geometric construction techniques. The main focus of this video will be on platonic solids, but from a spherical perspective. But before we proceed to a spherical environment, I wanted to quickly summarize the geometric properties from a Euclidean or solid geometry perspective. One could search the internet and find tables like these that summarize their geometric properties. The actual values would be very difficult to memorize. In addition, it would take in-depth knowledge of geometry and trigonometry to derive these values on your own. So in this video, I'll demonstrate how much simpler it is to learn about the geometric properties of platonic solids when they're projected on the surface of a sphere and be referred to as spherical platonics. Let's start with some basics. Spherical polygons are drawn with sections of geodesic arcs. The intersection of these arcs defines spherical angles. Geodesic arcs are great circles on a sphere that divide it into equal hemispheres. In addition to great circles, there are lesser or small circles which can be drawn on the sphere as well. While these lesser circles are lesser known, I will show in a subsequent video that these circles are quite important as well and can be used to construct the spherical versions of the five platonic solids. There are three basic geometric premises that underpin the following analysis of the five platonic solids. The surface area of a unit sphere is 4 pi based on its area formula of 4 pi r squared. The sum of the face angles around the vertex of a spherical polygon is equal to 2 pi. And the sum of the spherical angles of a spherical polygon can be used to calculate this area using Girard's theorem, which I will describe here. The spherical polyhedron consists of an arrangement of spherical polygons on the surface of a sphere. The five platonic solids can be projected onto the surface of a sphere to create a spherical tetrahedron, a spherical cube, a spherical octahedron, a spherical dodecahedron, and a spherical icosahedron. These spherical polyhedron partition the surface of the sphere into congruent spherical polygons, which form identical vertices for each particular case. I will use some simple spherical geometry to show why there are only five spherical polyhedrons that can divide a sphere's surface into equal sections. To do so, we will analyze various test cases of possible spherical polyhedron and determine if they are valid. For each test case, we'll need to determine the area of the polygonal faces for that particular spherical polyhedron. These faces will be regular spherical polygons with equal spherical angles. This will include a spherical triangle, spherical squares, spherical pentagons, and spherical hexagons. Once we have determined the internal angle of a polygonal face, we will then need to calculate its area. If the face area is greater than zero, the test case is valid. Otherwise, this is not a valid spherical polyhedron. Let me describe Girard's theorem, where it can be used to calculate the area of a spherical polygon. The spherical polygons used here will be regular equilateral polygons, where the internal spherical angle P are equal. E represents the area of the regular spherical polygon. P represents the internal angle of the regular spherical polygon. And N represents the number of sides of regular spherical polygons. If I elaborate this for each of the cases for the, the spherical polygons used. So for test case one, we have a case where we have three spherical triangles, A, B, and C, meet to form a vertex. The sum of the angles around this vertex is equal to 2 pi. Therefore, each angle 
is equal to 2 pi over 3. We will now use angle A1 to determine if the spherical angle A would have a valid area. We plug in the values in Girard's theorem. We can see that the area is equal to pi, therefore greater than 0, and we have a valid test case. Knowing that the complete surface area of the sphere is equal to 4 pi, we know this would divide the sphere into four equal sections and correspond to a spherical tetrahedron. Let's look at test case two, where we have three spherical squares meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles is equal to 2 pi. The internal angles compute to 2 pi over 3. We can use this angle to compute the area of the spherical square, which results in an area of 2 pi over 3. This is a valid area, and knowing that the area of the sphere is 4 pi, then it would require six spherical squares to partition the sphere. Let's look at test case three, where we have three spherical pentagons meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles is equal to two pi. The internal angles compute to two pi over three. We can now use this angle to compute the area of the spherical pentagon which results in an area of pi over 3. This is a valid area, and knowing that the area of the sphere is 4 pi, then it would require 12 spherical pentagons to partition the sphere. Let's look at test case 4, where we would have three spherical hexagons meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles would be 2 pi. The internal angle computes to 2 pi over 3. We can use this angle to compute the area of the spherical hexagon, which results in an area of 0. This indicates that this configuration is not a valid spherical polyhedron. Let's look at test case 5, where we have four spherical triangles meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles is equal to 2 pi. The internal angles compute 2 pi over 2. We can now use this angle to compute the area of the spherical triangle, which results in an area of pi over 2. This is a valid area, and knowing that the area of the sphere is 4 pi, then it would require 8 spherical triangles to partition the sphere. Let's look at test case 6, where we would have 4 spherical squares meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles would be 2 pi. The internal angle computes to pi over 2. We can use this angle to compute the area of the spherical square, which results in an area of 0. And this indicates that this configuration is not a valid spherical polyhedron. Let's look at test case 7, where we would have four spherical pentagons meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles would be 2 pi. The internal angle computes to pi over 2. We can use this angle to compute the area of the spherical pentagon, which results in an area of minus pi over 2. And this indicates that this is not a valid configuration for a spherical polyhedron. Let's look at test case 8, where we would have five spherical triangles meet at a vertex, where the sum of the angles is equal to 2 pi. The internal angles compute to 2 pi over 5. We can now use this angle to compute the area of the spherical triangle, which results in an area of pi over 5. This is a valid area, and knowing that the area of the sphere is equal to 4 pi, then it would require 20 spherical triangles to partition the sphere. Let's look at test case 9, where we would have six spherical triangles meet in a vertex where the sum of the angles would be 2 pi. The internal angle computes to pi over 3. We can use this angle to compute the area of the spherical triangle, which results in an area of 0. And this indicates that this configuration is not a valid spherical polyhedron. This table summarizes the results of this analysis. The valid spherical polyhedron are shown in black print 
and correspond to the five platonic solids. The invalid results are shown in red print. One can look at more test cases with different numbers of different spherical polyhedron, but none would result in valid configurations for a spherical polyhedron. The five valid results are the only five ways to partition a sphere surface into equal regions with identical vertices. So by analyzing these test cases, we've been able to prove that these are the only spherical polyhedra that can divide a sphere into congruent polygons with identical vertices, and they correspond to the five platonic solids. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how much easier it is to compare the geometric properties of these platonic solids in the spherical domain. This will also allow us a more in-depth analysis of the platonic solids as well. I thought this table was interesting. This table illustrates the various ratios of the faces of each of the spherical platonics, and they turn out all to be simple fraction or integer relationships.